on your face. Hallelujah. We are excited to be here in the presence of God. Uh, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Uh, this lunch hour, we are greatly privileged. We have wonderful men of God all the way from the United States. Uh, hallelujah. Put your hands together for that. Our Papa, our Apostle has friends in the U.S. And uh, we are really excited to have them here. He wanted them to come and bless us in our lunch hour meeting to impart something unto our spirits. Amen. And still the prophet of God from Congo is still continuing. He's still here. He's also in the house. Amen. Yeah, and uh, God is going to bless us. Let me take this opportunity to welcome Bishop Obonyo from the house of to come and introduce the ministers. Bishop, welcome. How many of you know Bishop Obonyo? And how many are happy to have him here today? Sir, you're welcome. Put your hands together for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you just wave and say amen? Well, it's a privilege and an honor to be here this afternoon. I know the man of God is, is, is here and is uh, doing such a great, great work. I spoke with Apostle in South Africa and uh, he knows we are here. I have visitors who have come from the U.S. They work together with Bishop, Archbishop Alfred Owens here of Greater Mount uh, Calvary Holiness Church of America. Praise the Lord. So I would like just to invite the bishop. He is bishop uh, with such an anointing upon his life to minister the word of God to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will introduce himself. He'll give you his full names and uh, all the details about himself. Let's put our hands together for him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. You look like you love the Lord. Amen. Just tell your neighbor, neighbor, I love Jesus. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Terrence Sykes from Virginia, in the United States, but we're traveling with Bishop Alfred Owens. Uh, Bishop Owens has a radio interview to do today, and he asked if I would come and represent him today in this lunch hour service. I'm also blessed to have with us Pastor Cleveland Bates, who pastors in Norfolk, Virginia. We have Pastor Bates right here. Would you make him feel welcome? Thank God we had an opportunity to be at the Cathedral of Praise on last night with Bishop Bonio, and we're glad to meet him. We're glad that he could join us today. Amen. We thank God that we're not forgotten your name, but we're the assistant pastor here. We praise God for you, sir. And for all of you God's people, can you just shake somebody's hand and tell I'm glad to see you? Amen. Amen. We're going to look at the word of God, and I'm not going to be before you long. But I want to look at the word of God because I believe that there is a word from the Lord today. Let me just say while we were upstairs, I was enjoying the praise team. You all sang so wonderfully. Musicians, let's thank God for them. Fantastic job. Oh, wow. I wanted to be down here just to enjoy because I'm a worshiper. I love to worship God. I love to sing and praise God. And you all were doing an excellent job. So thank you so very much. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you please look at your Bibles at the book of John? We're going to look at the book of John. If you don't have it, I'm going to read it for you. But we're looking at John chapter number 5. And while you're finding that, there was a song that they were singing. Let's, let's do a little bit more. For you are great. Do miracles so great? There is no one else like you. Can you worship the Lord? There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles.
bless you. We glorify your holy and righteous name. You alone are worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor belongs to you. Father, we're here to tell you thank you. You're such a wonderful God, a wonderful Savior. And we bless your name today. May God use us that we might speak to these people. I pray, God, that your spirit will be in this house even the more. Bless the pastor, oh God. Bless the officials. Bless the musicians. Bless the people. Bless the saints everywhere. And Father, we trust you that what we ask in the name of Jesus, it's already done. We thank you for it in advance. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, clap your hands and tell God thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. John chapter number 5. We're going to begin reading at verse number 1. And you will find these words. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity of 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk, and immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. In just a brief moment, I want to speak to you from this topic. We need a word from the Lord. Can you just say that? We need a word from the Lord. Amen. One more time. We need a word from the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am sure that it is a fact that there are some devastatingly horrible things that have happened in our lives since we've been a part of the human race, in our countries, in our lands. All over the globe, every time we turn around, there's something major happening around us. We can open up the newspaper, we can turn to the television, and we can find various things that are happening that will make us question, God, what is going on? Why is there so much devastation happening in the world? The world's economy is bad. The governmental positions, it seems like sometimes the government forgets about us once they get into position. And the things that they promised that they were going to do, sometimes they feel like they have just forgotten all about us and they've decided that they want to do something else rather than what they promised to do. And we kind of question God and God asks ask God, God, why am I not happy? Why are things going on so devastatingly around me? Why are there so many things happening in my life? Why am I ill? Why am I sick? Why is my mother sick? Why are my children sick? Why is there so much problem in the world? Has anybody ever asked that question? Why are we going through so much? Why is it that we can come to the house of the Lord and lift up a praise unto your name and then go back out into that world and nothing seems to have changed? Tell somebody, we need a word from the Lord. People are hurting everywhere. All over the world, not just in Africa, but in the United States, people are hurting. Children are dying, and, and people are dying all over the country. And we ask the question, God, what's happening? What can we do to remedy this situation? Our families, our loved ones are ill, and they're seeking advice from doctors. And the doctors are doing all they can do. But it seems like sometimes that's just not enough. 
the divorce rate in the United States, I don't know about here in Africa, but the divorce rate in the United States is climbing to an ever-increasing high. Husbands and wives don't want to stay together anymore. They're finding that they will feel better if they would just leave one another and be on their own. Somebody say, we need a word from the Lord. Even the Bible is steadily fulfilling itself. But when we look around, we find that we're seeing earthquakes in diverse places. We're seeing the Bible fulfilled and the promises of God and the things that God said would happen before the last day are exactly what's happening right now. Things are happening more frequently and we must understand that Jesus is on his way back. Does anybody believe that today? Amen. Tell your neighbor he's on his way back. Amen. So as we look at our text today, we find that Jesus was in a certain city. And we understand also that he said, I have to go this way because there's some things that he has to do. He goes to this place near Jerusalem, and there's a sheep market, a pool that is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. The Bible says that there were five porches, and in that, it was just like a real large arena, but in there, there were people laying around everywhere, and every one of them had an infirmity. Somebody was sick with the disease. Somebody was halted. Somebody was lame. Somebody was hurting from the head to the toe. There were problems everywhere. But Jesus looks over the crowd, and when he comes in, he puts his eye on, the Bible says, a certain man. He looks over the crowd and he sees all of the hurt and all of the disappointment, but his eye falls on a certain man. And he looks at that certain man and he walks up to him and said, will you be made whole? That's the question that Jesus is asking us today. Do you want to be made whole? What's your answer? Amen. You know what the man said? He said, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. And I can imagine that Jesus said, I didn't ask you that. The question is, do you want to be made whole? So he should have just said, yes, I want to be made whole. Let me ask that question again. Is there anybody in this house who wants to be made whole? Amen. Is there anybody in this house who wants God to touch your body? Amen. The answer is, yes, God, do something right now. Because if you don't do it, it won't get done. Glory to God. So he asked the man, do you want to be made whole? The man said, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. But the Bible said that at a certain season, an angel would come down and he would stir the water. And the first one to get in would be healed. Lord have mercy. Can you imagine what would happen if God starts stirring the water right here? And the first one to jump in would be healed. We'd have people running all over the place trying to get to this spot. Because they want to be healed. Look at your neighbor and say, do you want to be healed? Amen. So he said, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. But Jesus said, that's all right. That's all right. I am greater than that water right there. Amen. I have all power in my hands. And whether you can get in the water or not, it does not matter. Because I have healing power on the inside of me. All Jesus has to do is speak a word. And you will be healed. Tell somebody, we need a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm going to give you three points and then I'm going to be finished. The first thing you need to understand is, and out of these three points, these are three things that don't matter to God. Can you say that? Three things that don't matter to God. In other words, he's not concerned about it at all. It does not phase him at all. It does not change the way he is or change who he is. The first thing is, it does not matter to God. What your infirmity might be. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you have a headache or a toe ache, whether you have a heartache, Bishop says, or a backache or anything else, it does not matter what your infirmity might be. If there's something wrong with you from your head to your toe, God is able to heal you and he'll do it right now. Hallelujah. God has the power to reach out his hand and touch whomsoever he will. God has the authority to speak a word out of his mouth and you'll rise up and be healed from all of your infirmity. So the first thing is, it does not matter what your infirmity is. How do you know that, Bishop? Because it says here, there was a certain man and he had an infirmity for 38 years. It did not say what the infirmity was. 
And the reason why I believe that God left it that way in the writings is so that you could put whatever your infirmity is there. Hallelujah. Whatever your sickness is, you can put your sickness there. Amen. And then the second thing is it does not matter to God how long you've been in that condition. Glory to God. Some of you have been suffering a long time. Some of you have been asking God to heal me a long time. Some of you have been asking God, God, I need more money. God, I need more help. God, I need more friends. God, I need some more education. God, I need. It does not matter how long you've had your need. Because the Bible says that a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is but a day with God. So the man was suffering for 38 years, but in God's time, it was still just a brief period of time. Hallelujah. There is something in the word of God called the Kairos time and the Chronos time. Chronos time is the calendar or the watch time. It's a time that we look at and we say that today is Thursday or tomorrow is Friday or it's 5 o'clock or it's 6 o'clock. But then there's Kairos time. Kairos time is when God says now. Hallelujah. You could be walking down the street going wherever you want to go and all of a sudden God says now. And your blessing will be right on you, not tomorrow, but when? Now. Look at your neighbor and say, God said, now. Oh, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. Turn around and tell somebody else, God said, now. Hallelujah. We need a word from the Lord. Come on, can you clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Tell somebody, I need a word from the Lord. Amen. So the first thing is, it does not matter what your infirmity is. The second thing is, it does not matter how long you've had that infirmity. And the third thing is, it does not matter who's in front of you. Because God will step over some folk. Hallelujah. I'm making myself happy in here. God will step over some folk to get to you. How do you know that? Because the Bible says that when Jesus came here, the whole place was full of impotent folk. The whole place was full. So if the whole place is full and Jesus is trying to get to that person, he has to step over this person. And then he has to step over this one and walk around this one just to get to you. Tell somebody, Jesus is stepping over some folk to get to me. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and say it. They, they don't believe it. Tell them, Jesus is stepping over some people just to get to me. Hallelujah, because he loves you enough to step over some folk. Hallelujah. Some people on your job deserve the higher pay, but you're going to get it because God is going to step over them to get to you. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, the people at the car dealership deserve to buy that car, but you're going to get it because God is going to step over them to get to you. Tell somebody we need a word from the Lord. I'm just about finished, but let me close with this. The word that we need is what Jesus spoke right here in the Bible. When he looked at the man, he said in verse 8, Jesus said three things. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Hallelujah. Can you say that? What's the first one? Rise. What's the second one? Take up your bed. What's the third one? Walk. Now, the first thing you have to do is rise. Let me try it again. Thank you. That's one. The first thing you need to do is rise. The second thing you need to do is take up your bed. Now, listen, take up your bed is whatever was holding you down. It no longer holds you down. But you're going to pick it up. So this is an act of your faith. Now, now, if it's too heavy, don't do it, but just lift up that chair that you were sitting in. That's symbolic of taking up your bed. And the next thing he said do was walk. Just take one step. That's enough. That's enough. Amen. God says, I want you to rise, take up your bed, and walk. Now put the chairs back. And let's give God some praise. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. 
because we have a word from the Lord. What's the word that God gives us? Rise. Take up your bed and walk. Turn around and tell three people, rise. Take up your bed and walk. Come on, tell them, tell them. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, clap your hands and say hallelujah. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. We need a word from the Lord. And truly God is in this place right now. Amen. Before I take my seat, I just want to pray for you. I want to pray that the word that you heard today would not just stay in your head. But it needs to get in your heart. Hallelujah. Because once you get it in your heart, then your mouth is going to speak it. And once your mouth starts speaking it, then it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Is anybody sick today? Anybody sick? Are there any sick among us? Come up here. Let me pray with you. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Glory. Just stand right across here. Spread out right across here. Come on. Anybody who's sick. That's what the word says. That he called for the sick. Amen. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's what Jesus says. They shall lay hands on the sick and they what? Shall recover. They shall recover. So I want you to pray. You pray for them. Just pray for them. And I'm going to pray and lay hands on them. Lift up your hands right where you are. Come on. In the name of Jesus. God, we just touch and agree right now, Lord God. That by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, she's healed from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I rebuke and bind sickness. I rebuke and bind disease. I come up against it now, my God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that it is done. Now, God, touch this sister right here, God. Move by your spirit upon her. Let no hurt, harm, or danger befall her. We rebuke the enemy right now. The blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon her life. And, Father, we thank you for her healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. God, we move by, move by your spirit, God. Oh, God, we rebuke the devil. Satan, the blood of Jesus be against you. You have no authority here. We command you to loose your hold from off of her household. Loose your hold from off of her life. Loose your hold from off of her family. Loose your hold, Satan. We command you to be gone in the name of Jesus. Now, God, heal her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Let it be done. And we thank you. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord God, that healing is the children's bread. It belongs to us, oh God. You said by the stripes of Jesus Christ we are healed. And we thank you for her healing right now. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Heal, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Work it out for your glory. And, Father, we trust you that it is done. Now, show yourself mighty in her life. Restore her joy. Give her greater joy that she might laugh and praise your name. It's in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for moving by your spirit. Work out every situation for your glory, God. Thank you for healing her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Touch her right now, God. Do great and mighty things in the name of Jesus. Just lay your hands right here. Put your hand right there. Right here. There you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would just touch every problem in her stomach, every problem in her body. We curse it. We command it to come out, and we command her to be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that everything shall work for your glory and for her good in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we glorify you. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. God says he's moving all over you right now. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord on you. Hallelujah. Touch her right now, God. Oh, God, let her never be the same again. God, let her remember this day for the rest of her life. For this is the day that you have made. And a healing took place in her body, in her mind, in her spirit. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Touch right now, God. Touch right now, God. Touch right now, God. Touch right now, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Touch right now. Touch her, God. Touch her, God. 
healer right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we trust you that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Now everybody just lift up your hands. God, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, that this word has not just fallen on deaf ears, but has fallen on good ground. I thank you, Father, that from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, they will never be the same again. I thank you, Lord God, that your word has come to heal and to deliver and to make whole. In the name of Jesus, I command that they rise, take up their bed, and walk. You're not concerned about how long they've been infirmed. You're not concerned about their infirmity. You're not even concerned about who else might be in front of them. But God, today, they will never be the same again. And Father, I thank you for seeing them, even in the midst of a crowd. Walk over somebody to get to them. And Father, I thank you that it is done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, clap your hands and bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Well done. Now put your hands together for Bishop Terrence. I said, put your hands together with excitement. Bishop, thank you so much. That word was timely. Amen. It was wonderful. Hallelujah. So lift your hands and just worship Jesus. Uh, we'll be leaving here in a short while. We still have some time. The prophet from Congo is going to come and prophesy. Pray for us. And then we'll be out of here. Amen. We are excited to have you, Bishop. And Pastor, thank you so much for gracing us and uh, ministering to us. We believe our lives will never be the same again. We'll take back a good word to our apostle and papa that you blessed us tremendously. Hallelujah. Now, every one of you, pick your offering. Just your offering. Sadaka yako shika, sadaka yako araka sana. Apostle, Pastor Pierre, atubariki leo. Asante sana. Amen. 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 Na no salimu nyo yote kwa jina la Bwana Yesu Kristo. Gonna fura. Yes. 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 Thank you. To not take a coomba. After we have prayed, I will speak into your life. All those who respect or hear the voice of God will be blessed. And he who does not hear or listen to the voice of God will not be blessed. God created all people in the whole world. But he says in the word that, that I do not desire any man we shall unlock that secret this evening. God has created all people but he says in the Bible that he speaks in the word in Proverbs Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17 the Lord says that he does not desire for anyone that God only loves those people who love him 
Follow me closely. Mungu aliumba watu wote. God created all people. Lakini anasema, but he says, hapendaki watu wote. He does not love just everyone. Yeye anapenda mpaka ule mtu mwenyewe anampenda yeye Mungu. He loves only that person who loves him. Na ndio Mungu anampenda. That's the person God loves. Sasa nani anapenda Mungu? So who here loves God? Ni yule mtu ambaye it's that person anasikia neno la Mungu who hears the word of God. Anaishika and he takes it. Na anaitumikia. And he acts on Huyo ndiye anapenda Mungu. That's the person who loves God. Amesema he says katika kitabu in the book ya Yohan in the book of John sura ya 14 verses 14 namba ya 10 moja, verses 21 amesema he says huyo mwenye kunipenda mimi the one who loves me ni huyo mwenye kushika neno langu is he who heareth me and he acts on it. kama mwanadamu in others if a human being la mungu hears the word of God na haishiki and it does not hey, it. and it does not manake hamtaki mungu ukisoma katika kitabu ya yohani when you read in the book of hapo john hapo sura ya 14 ba- chapter verses number 23 verses 23 utakuta mungu anasema ule mwenye hanipende hata shika neno la does not hear my word sikiliza ndugu listen to me brother mungu ananipenda sana god loves you so much tizama Leo nilikuja today I came Hivi nifanye kazi that I may work Mungu anatuma wajumbe wengine but God has sent other servants kutoka mbali from America maana yake it means Mungu ananipenda God loves you Biblia inasema the Bible says nyumba ambaye haipokee wageni the house that does not receive visitors hiyo nyumba haiwezi kabarikiwa that house cannot be blessed kama unaona kila wakati that's why you see every yenu in this church wageni wanatoka mbali Visitors come from Wana afar. Na neno la mungu. They come with the word Manake of God. Wanakuja na mission fulani. They come with a mission. Kwa ajili ya maisha yako. Because of your life. Sasa ukashika hiyo message. If you take that message. Ukaitumikia katika maisha yako. You act upon it. Utaona maajabu. You will see miracles. Pia mkono wa Mungu. And the hand of God on your life. Usizani kama wale wageni wanakuja tu. Bure anafika hapa na hapana kuna mission. Don't think those visitors come for nothing they come here for your life and for a mission. Mimi Mungu alinituma na mission juu ya watu fulani. God sent me for a mission for certain people in this Haiko church. Haiko juu yenu wote. It's not for everyone here. Sasa wale wengine wanabaki. Others who may not receive. Sharti Mungu atume wengine. God will send someone juu ya for, them, yao. for their mission. Sikiliza. Listen. Nalinyambia hapo siku moja. I said one another day. Kulikuwa huyo kisheta kiguru huyo kiwete alikuwa anawekewa kila siku mbele ya mlango wa kanisa there was a cripple that used to be put on the on the get beautiful huyo kiwete that cripple yesu alikuwa anaingia kukanisa jesus would pass by that anamuona, every, every year na akamwacha pale jesus left the cripple hivyo yesu alikufa even when jesus akafufuka and he rose again akenda mbinguni he went to heaven yesu alimwacha hapo he left the cripple alikuwa anamuona yesu anaporisha wengine lakini akumponyaka huyo kiwete kwa nini why Alimwacha hapo. Why did he leave him there? Tu minister because ya Petro na Jean he left him for Peter. Ili kane juu ya huyo kiwete. James so that the ministry of Peter and John may be glorified. Yesu angemponyesha huyo kiwete. Jesus could have healed Kama him. Kama ministry ya Petro na Jean hangejuikana. If he had healed him the ministry of Peter and Paul would not have. Ila fali kiwete abaki hapo. In others the cripple have Petro na Jean waje. So that Peter wamponye. Hivyo ministry yao ijuikane dunia nzima and their ministry may be known the world over sasa mimi nakwambia i'm telling you ule ambaye alikuja na bahasha yake whosoever came with your envelope hiyo ya cho the envelope of uh, being delivered kuja come niombe na wewe hapa that i may pray for you usizarau hiyo mambo don't despise those words itakuzalia mambo makubwa it's going to change your life kama ulikuja na hiyo bahasha if you have your envelope panda haraka tuombe watu wa kazi waende kukazi mimi taingia katika service I'll be here in the service jioni ya leo in the evening today prophecy I'll prophesy deliverance I'll deliver watu kufunguliwa kokolewa and will be jioni ya leo today niko na nini pamoja I'll be here today tuliacha kwanza fasi juu ya wageni we 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 allowed uh, tuliacha kwanza fasi kidogo juu ya wageni We al- I didn't minister today because of the visitors. Mimi niko mkenya, mtu wa Kenya mimi. Even me I'm Ila palito achie wageni wa America wahubiri. Sisi watu wa Kenya tutokea jioni. 
So we Kenyans we shall minister in the evening. The Americans are finished. Haya. Kuja na hiyo bahasha yako. Come with your seed of 7000 shillings. Kuja na haraka. Just quickly. Kuja na hiyo haraka. Ikaa kidogo, tafadhali. Have your seats. Ikaa kidogo. Have your seats. Mwenye alikuja na hiyo bahasha yake. Whoever came with that envelope. Panda hapa. Climb over here. Kata magoti hapa. Kneel on the podium. Toa pesa yako. Remove your money. Hapana kuzarao hiki tu. Do not despise this thing. Itazama makubwa kwa ajili ya maisha yako. Because it will produce fruit in your life. Shika pesa yako kumkono. Hold your money in your hand. Kamata bahasha. Weka. Put the envelope there. Nani wengine? Which other person? Usibaki na hiyo bahasha nyumbani mwako. Don't stay with that envelope in your house. Napenda maisha yako yabadilike. Because I want your life to change. Kanisa nzima tia mikono yako juu. Everyone lift up your hands. Wewe. Funga macho yako. Close your eyes. Shika pesa yako. Hold your money. Ambia Mungu. Tell God, nakuja kununua. I've come to redeem maisha yangu. My life kwenye walifunga. Wherever it was bound. Biblia inasema. The Bible says, pesa money inajibu kila kitu. Answereth all things. Tangu leo from today, wherever my life was bound, they should never see me there again. They should see my money. That is my own. We are praying that God may do great things in this place. So she may, Aishike, she may touch kwa wakati mdogo isikawie. Twende tukaombe, tuombe kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Tuombe haleluya. Let's pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Omba. Pray. Omba. Pray, pray. Pray. Ambia Mungu niko mshuhuda. Tell God. Napenda nione that Lord I want to see your ndugu na badirika. The life of my sister. Pray for this lady in front. That the testimony of God may be manifested in her life. In the name of Jesus. Be silent, you are praying. Father in heaven. Huyu mkono anaweka juu ya kichwa huyo mama. As I lay my hand upon her head. Ndiye mkono ambao uliweka moto kati yake. This very hand is the one you put fire. Ulinyampia. You spoke to me. Ulimwengu mzima. In the whole world. Huyo tamkuta na shida. Whosoever you shall find with problems. Alifungwa. And they are bound. Nikaweka mkono wangu katika kichwa chake. And I lay my hands on their head. Atatoka kwenye wale mfunga. They shall come out of their Kwanzia leo. From today. Kwenye huyo mama alifungwa. Wherever she was bound. Moto upate kushuka huko. Na kwenda kumuokoa. Na kwenda kumkomboa. Na kwenda kumfungua. Na kwenda kumbariki. Tangu leo. From today. Atoke ndani ya choo. Come out of the chile. Be blessed. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Kanisa sema amen na nguvu. Let the whole church say amen. Simama. Rise up on your feet. Weka pesa yako hapa. Just put your money here. Sawa. Simama juu. Rise up on your feet everyone. Mtu wote alikuja hapo. Everyone who came here. Aje apande mbegu yake. You have a seed in your hand just come and sow. Kisha tunabariki mwende. And then I'll bless you. I just want to lay, to hold your hand and Kuja bless you. Just put in my hand. Yako. Whatever seed you have. Just hold my hand. Weka pesa yako embe. Whatever you have. Panda. Plant it. Utavuna. And you'll, you, you, you'll harvest in Jesus' name. Kuja haraka. Just come quickly. Whatever seed you have. Whether it is 1,500. Whatever seed you have. Just put it in his hand, not in the basket, in his hand. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. 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 Be blessed.